When thinking about narrow gauge steam railroading, the first thing that may come to your mind are the remnants of the Dendron Rio Grande narrow gauge in Colorado, the Cumbres and Toltec in Durango and Silverton. You may think of the Sumter Valley Railroad in the Northwest, but for some people, the first thing that comes to their mind is the East Broadtop Railroad. Located in Rock Hill Furnace, Pennsylvania, the East Broadtop has had a series of ups and downs in its history. From initial construction, to abandonment, to reopenings, to closures again. Today we're going to take a detailed look at the history of the East Broadtop Railroad. So with the intro out of the way, let's begin. The East Broadtop Railway was chartered in 1856, but by 1867 the line was already bought by new owners due to the original charterers having financial problems as a result of the Civil War. Track was laid between 1872 and 1874 with the original line going from Mount Union to Orbisonia, Pennsylvania. The purpose of the railroad was to deliver iron ore from the mines in Mount Union to the towns and cities along the line. During the early 1900s, the railroad shift their primary source of revenue to coal delivery as the iron industry faded out. When the railroad was at its peak, it had over 60 miles of track extending as far out as Robertsdale, Woodvale, and Alvin, Pennsylvania. The railroad had a modest fleet of 28 locomotives, however, it was most well known for its fleet of 282 Mikados, numbered 12 through 18, with number 12, affectionately named Millie, being the smallest of the 282s, and 18 being the largest. The railroad even had a fleet of standard gauge locomotives used to interchange freight with Class 1 railroads in the area. Unfortunately, this wasn't meant to last, as the railroad's customers quickly began to modernize. By the 1950s, coal demand had plummeted, and the railroad was losing money left and right. For a while, the only thing that kept the railroad afloat was the delivery of goods to the towns along the route. But even that was lost as they started getting their goods delivered by truck. By the mid-1950s, the railroad had had enough, and the government granted them permission to abandon the line. And that's exactly what happened on April 14, 1956. When the word was given, the workers simply dropped their tools and went home. The line was quickly sold to the Kowalczyk Salvage Corporation for scrap. However, the company elected to not immediately pull up the rails for the line, leaving it fully intact for several years. The company let the railroad sit for about four years, until 1960, when the cities of Orbisonia and Rock Hill Furnace asked the salvage company to bring a train out for display in order to celebrate the bicentennial of their incorporation. The salvage company accepted the request, and even amped it up by restoring four miles of track for the railroad to operate on. They then went on to operate tourist trains for the rest of that summer, and it ended up being a huge success. So much so that the railroad came back as a fully-fledged tourist line in 1961. In addition, another mile of track was restored for the railroad to run on. The railroad quickly became a huge tourist attraction for the cities of Orbisonia and Rock Hill Furnace, and it attracted hundreds of thousands of people to ride the railroad each year. Naturally, since the railroad had returned to operation, a good majority of their Mikados were returned to operation as well. So let's take a more in-depth look at those locomotives. One of the first locomotives to operate again on the East Broadtop was number 12. Number 12 was built in December of 1911 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works and was the first Mikado that the East Broadtop ever owned. During the 1940s and 1950s, Number 12 was not strong enough to pull most of the trains on the East Broadtop and therefore spent most of this period sitting in the roundhouse. This all changed in 1960 when 12 was the first of two engines to run again on the newly reopened East Broadtop Railroad in tourist line service. Number 12 would go on to continue operating on the East Broadtop Railroad until the year 2000 when it was sidelined indefinitely with firebox issues. Number 14 was built in 1912 by Baldwin and was essentially a beefed up version of Number 12. Therefore, it was able to handle the heavier trains on the East Broadtop during the 1940s and 1950s and was working on the railroad until the bitter end. Number 14 returned to operation on the East Broadtop in 1961 and continued to operate until the early 1970s when it was pulled from service requiring extensive repairs. Those repairs were completed in 1987 and Number 14 continued to steam on the East Broadtop until the mid-2000s when it was pulled from service. Number 15 was built in February of 1914 and is essentially a duplicate of Number 14 with the only difference between the two being the number plates. Number 15 was the second locomotive to be brought back to work alongside number 12 when the railroad reopened in 1960. Number 15 was used nearly every operating season on the East Broadtop with the exception of some minor repairs in the early 1980s. Some crews on the East Broadtop have even dubbed the locomotive Old Reliable due to its efficiency and lack of maintenance needs. 
Number 17 was built in March of 1918 and was one of the larger locomotives that the East Broadtop operated. Number 17 was most frequently used in revenue service on heavy freight trains that the other locomotives could not pull. Number 17 was eventually brought back in 1968, but was used as a reserve engine in case one of the other locomotives had an issue. This was mainly due to the fact that it was one of the larger locomotives, and as a result, it was hard on the rails. It was also due to the fact that her superheaters were constantly on the fritz. The locomotive last saw use in 2001, and has been sitting inside the roundhouse ever since. The East Broadtop Railroad was back, and better than ever. However, much like the railroad was in 1956, things weren't meant to last. 2011 will be the final operating season for the East Broadtop as a tourist line. They had announced earlier that year that they will be closing due to increasing operating costs. Rail fans from all over the country came in to get a last glimpse of the railroad in operation before it fell silent once again. That year's fall spectacular would be the railroad's last event before closing. Number 15 was the only steam locomotive to operate at that event. The railroad has been sitting abandoned and unused for years now. The entire line to Mount Union is still intact today, and it has been sitting since 1956. An organization known as the Friends of the East Broadtop have been trying to restore the line in its entirety so the trains may once again operate on the railroad. Progress on restoring the line has been slow, but it is happening nonetheless. The owners of the railroad have been trying to sell the entirety of the line in one piece so that someone else may operate trains on it again. However, deal after deal to buy the line has fallen through in recent years, and every time, things start to look more and more bleak. People can only hope that the railroad will return to operation someday, but as it stands right now, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And unfortunately, that's where the story of the East Broadtop Railroad comes to an end. I'd like to give a special shout out to Eddie Wise for suggesting that I do this video, and I'd also like to give a small apology since I took so long to get around to making it, but it's here nonetheless for you to enjoy. If I missed anything, or if I got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. Normally, I'd ask for your guys' suggestions for future videos. However, as I mentioned a couple of videos ago, I do have quite the backlog of videos I need to get to first. So please hold off on those until further notice. Anyway, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thanks for watching the history of the East Broadtop Railroad.